Now there are a couple items I want you to make sure that you have set up correctly before you start learning third position. First of all, make sure that your left hand fingernails are trimmed. You don't want the nail touching the fingerboard before the fleshy part of your finger does. And as you move up the fingerboard, this problem of long fingernails actually becomes more pronounced because of the angle at which your fingers are touching the strings. So make sure they're trimmed. That will really help you as you're playing in the higher positions. Next, I want you to have a relatively flat violin. You don't want the scroll dropping because then you're going to have to travel uphill to get to third position. And you also don't want it too high up because then you're falling down to third position. So you want the violin relatively flat and very stable. That's going to help you as you move up and down. Now the next video is a video from my beginner's violin course from YouTube and it's just to help you double check that your shoulder rest is adjusted correctly so that you have a nice stable violin. The next important concept is using light finger pressure and light thumb pressure. If you're using too much pressure or if you have a death grip on the violin then you're not going to be able to shift easily and you also won't be able to quickly adjust your fingers if you're out of tune. Now you can use these two exercises to make sure you aren't using excessive finger pressure or to make sure you aren't squeezing with your thumb. The first exercise is just called slides. And this is very important. You're gonna use this concept a lot in third position. Now you can actually do this without the violin. Just contract your elbow. And do you see how my hand stays the same? I'm not moving my wrist at all. I'm just contracting and expanding my elbow here. And when you do this on the violin, you want that same concept to be happening. You want your thumb to move with your hand and you don't want to grip with your thumb or press too much with your finger because then you're not going to be able to easily slide up and back down. Now if you're playing that and it kind of sounds like a machine gun, you know that you're pressing or you're gripping somewhere in your left hand. So relax so that you can try to slide very easily up and down the fingerboard. Now the next exercise that you can use to make sure you're not using excessive pressure with your thumb or your left hand fingers is a little exercise that actually is going to produce a really ugly sound, but that's okay. You'll learn a lot from it. So you can take any passage or just a scale and play it barely touching the string with your fingers. It will sound bad. All right, that's what you want. Now you do it again and use just maybe 10% more pressure with your fingers. And you notice that actually sounds totally fine. So when you do this exercise, you're teaching your fingers and your thumb just how little pressure you need to make a note sound well. And you also want to remember, if you're pressing with your fingers, you're probably automatically pressing, pressing with your thumb because you have opposing digits here. So if you're pressing with your thumb, you're going to be pressing with your fingers. So try that exercise a lot to help you relax both the thumb and the fingers. The next concept I want you to remember is keeping fingers down. I call this KFD for short. Now we've talked about this a little bit before, but it's so important. I want to talk about it one more time. You always want to keep fingers down unless you absolutely have to move them. If you place a finger and it's correctly in tune, it's an anchor point to help you find the next fingers. For instance, let's say in first position, we're playing second finger C sharp on the A string. And the next note we play is third finger A on the E string. Well, instead of lifting up my second finger and having to figure out where the third finger goes, I can leave my second finger down, place my third finger right next to the second finger, and if I feel them touching, I know it's in tune. I actually call that a vertical half step when the fingers are touching just on different strings. And that brings me to my next point. 
I want you to start thinking vertically. We're used to thinking horizontally about our notes, but you have to think about how notes relate to each other in a vertical way. For instance, thinking of notes in terms of vertical half steps or vertical whole steps. They aren't technically half steps or whole steps, but the distances are the same, and that's really gonna help you when it comes to learning higher positions. I also want you to think about how you label notes when you see them printed. For instance, if you see this note, don't think first finger on the E string. Instead, say the note name in your head. It's an F, and it can be played using any left hand finger and any string. So don't memorize finger numbers, memorize note names. I also want you to visualize notes when you are playing scales and say the note name in your head as you play. This will help you tremendously when it comes to note reading in third position. Next is a video on how to adjust your shoulder rest to make sure that you're really comfortable. And then we're gonna talk about some music theory and how scale patterns and key signatures work. Now the music theory video was originally in my scale course, Creative Scales for the Experimental Violinist, but I'm reusing it again here because it's so important to understanding the language of the violin. Even if you've already seen this video, I suggest re-watching it just to make sure you are fresh on all the concepts. And then we're gonna get into some even more advanced music theory to help you in third position.